In this video, we'll be demonstrating the surface anatomy of the hip and how we can use this to map out the root of the sciatic nerve. We'll show the importance of this in order to perform a safe intramuscular injection into the gluteal region. And finally, we'll use ultrasound to map out the root of the sciatic nerve. Firstly, we're going to demonstrate the surface anatomy of the anterior hip on a real patient. The most easily felt landmark on the anterior hip is the iliac crest. If you place your hands on your hips, you'll almost certainly be resting on the iliac crest. If we follow this forward to its most anterior point, our fingers are now on the anterior superior iliac spine. If we trace down diagonally, we'll eventually re reach the pubic symphysis, which is reasonably low. About two centimetres either side of the pubic symphysis are the pubic tubercles. Running from each pubic um, tubercle, to each anterior superior iliac spine is the inguinal ligament. About two centimetres below the inguinal ligament, if we press deeply, we can palpate the femoral head. Now we're going to demonstrate the surface anatomy of the posterior hip, and we're also going to show how this can be used to map out the root of the sciatic nerve. This is of particular importance when performing intramuscular injections into the gluteal region, so that you know how to avoid the sciatic nerve. There are three major bony landmarks which are important to palpate in the posterior thigh. Firstly, the greater trochanter, which is on the lateral aspect of the thigh, here. Next, we can palpate the posterior superior iliac spine. The easiest way to do this is to locate the iliac crest again and move backwards until we find the, the bony prominence. That is the posterior superior iliac spine. If we move down from the posterior superior iliac spine, we will eventually come across the ischial tuberosity, which is here. Now that we've identified those three bony points on the posterior thigh, we can use them to map the root of the sciatic nerve. In order to do this, we're going to have to mark three extra imaginary points. The first point is a point around two centimetres lateral to an imaginary line between the ischial tuberosity and the posterior superior iliac spine. The next point is a point around halfway between the greater trochanter and the ischial tuberosity. And the final point is a point around two thirds down the back of the thigh. If we join these three points together, we can map out the approximate route of the sciatic nerve. Having this in your head allows you to avoid it during intramuscular injection. Now we will demonstrate two methods to perform safe gluteal intramuscular injection using the surface anatomy that we've learned today. We usually do this with the patient standing up. The first method to allow safe gluteal IM injection involves dividing the gluteal region into four quadrants. To do this, we will draw two imaginary lines. The first will be a vertical line from the highest point of the iliac crest down. The second is a horizontal line that passes halfway between the ischial tuberosity and the iliac crest. You can see that the sciatic nerve passes through the lower medial of these quadrants. In order to avoid damage to the sciatic nerve, we can therefore safely inject into the upper outer quadrant. Now we will show an alternative method of safe iron gluteal injection. This method more reliably avoids the sciatic nerve, but it does require a more compliant patient. Firstly, we take our hand and place the palm of our hand over the greater trochanter. Our thumb should be pointed towards the inguinal region. Our index finger points towards the iliac crest and we spread our index and middle fingers. The point of injection is between the proximal interphalangeal joints between the index and middle fingers. Finally, we're going to demonstrate the sciatic nerve using ultrasound. The bright white structure we can see in the centre of the screen is a sciatic nerve. Superficial to this, gluteus maximus. Deep to this, quadratus femoris. Now we will follow the root of the sciatic nerve to the mid thigh. As you can see, the sciatic nerve becomes much deeper at this point, meaning it's hard to follow with ultrasound. At some point between the mid-thigh and the popliteal fossa, it will bifurcate. 
there's great anatomical variability here. In this video, we demonstrate the surface anatomy of the hip, how we can use this to perform safe IM gluteal injection, with particular reference to avoiding the sciatic nerve, and we demonstrate the sciatic nerve on ultrasound.